Welcome to the Daily History Podcast, where every day is a journey through time. Today we embark on an exploration of one of history's most intellectually fertile periods, the golden age of Islam, science, philosophy, and art. This era, spanning from the 8th to the 14th century, was marked by a remarkable outburst of creativity, ingenuity, and wisdom. It was a time when Muslim scholars and thinkers led the world in knowledge and discovery, laying the foundations for many of the conveniences of modern life. The roots of this golden age can be traced back to the Abbasid Caliphate, founded in the mid-8th century, which became the cradle for Islamic civilization's unprecedented growth. Under the Abbasid rule, the capital city of Baghdad burgeoned into a vibrant metropolis, a melting pot of cultures, peoples, and ideas. This period of prosperity was further bolstered by stable governance, openness to foreign cultures, and a robust economy fueled by extensive trade networks extending from the Mediterranean to the Silk Road. Cultural and geopolitical factors played pivotal roles in the advancement of this era. Caliphs like al-Mamun founded institutions like the House of Wisdom, where scholars translated vast amounts of knowledge from Greek, Persian, and Indian sources into Arabic. Cities such as Cordoba in Al-Andalus and Cairo became centers for learning, where Christians, Jews, and Muslims coexisted, contributing to a culture that valued intellectual debate and scholarly pursuits. This was an era that did not merely seek to preserve knowledge, but significantly enhance it. This harmonious blend of diverse traditions and the patronage of scholars led to a societal value system that celebrated intellectualism and progress. The Islamic Golden Age was maintained by visionary leaders who understood that the pursuit of knowledge was the most noble of endeavors. They sponsored scholars and scientists, encouraging the translation of classical texts, supporting research, and rewarding innovation. It was a culture that truly believed in the power of the human mind to understand, enhance, and pass on the torch of knowledge to future generations. We now turn our gaze to the extraordinary scientific achievements during the golden age of Islam, a time which arguably saw some of the most profound advancements in human history. Our exploration begins with the field of mathematics, a discipline that was revolutionized by the luminous minds of this era. The introduction of algebra, an Arabic term itself, can be traced back to the great mathematician Al-Khwarizmi, whose works in the 9th century laid down the foundational rules of this branch of mathematics. His book, The Compendious Book on Calculation by Completion and Balancing, not only introduced the term algebra, but also provided elegant solutions to linear and quadratic equations, offering a systematic approach that is still in use. Moving forward, the mathematical innovations did not stop there. The concept of zero, Arabic numerals, and the decimal point, which are cornerstones of the number system we utilize today, were disseminated by Islamic scholars across the known world. These numerals greatly simplified calculations and record keeping, ushering in a new age of commerce and science. Imagine a world without the numeral zero or the ability to easily conduct complex calculations. The trajectory of science as we know it would have been utterly different. Beyond mathematics, the cosmos above beckoned the inquisitive minds of Islamic scholars towards astronomy. With their detailed star charts and improvements to the astrolabe, they traversed beyond the realms of previous civilizations' knowledge. The astrolabe, an intricate instrument capable of various astronomical calculations, became indispensable for navigators and astronomers alike throughout the Islamic world and beyond. Observatories flourished, the most notable being the Maraga Observatory, where scholars like Nasir al-Din al-Tusi made critical advancements in astronomical theory that predated the Copernican model by over two centuries. Let us not bypass the strides made in medicine and health sciences, where Muslim scholars shined brightly. Physicians like Al-Razi, known in the West as Razes, and Ibn Sina, known as Avicenna, became legendary for their contributions. Al-Razi's comprehensive book on medicine and Ibn Sina's The Canon of Medicine served as authoritative references in the medical community across both the Muslim world and Europe throughout the Middle Ages and beyond. 
These works encapsulated the collective medical knowledge of the time and introduced novel concepts in pharmacology, surgery, and infectious diseases, significantly shaping the course of medical practice. Their innovative approach to medicine also led to the establishment of hospitals that were far ahead of their time, offering wards for specific ailments and the introduction of medical ethics. It is truly remarkable how these scholars integrated and further developed the wisdom of past civilizations, not only preserving it, but also setting the foundational stones of modern medicine. We now turn our gaze to the beacon that illuminated the philosophical sky of the golden age of Islam, its pioneering thinkers. Among these great minds, Ibn Sina, known in the West as Avicenna, shines brightly. Born near Bukhara in 980 AD, Avicenna's The Book of Healing is a vast philosophical and scientific encyclopedia, and his Canon of Medicine was a standard medical text for centuries. Another luminary, Al-Farabi, known as the second teacher after Aristotle, was instrumental in introducing Greek thought to the Islamic world through his works. The vast intellectual endeavors of these thinkers led to the integration of Greek philosophy with Islamic thought. Muslims inherited a rich Greek philosophical tradition, primarily through the translation movement that took place in Baghdad's illustrious House of Wisdom. Here, the works of Aristotle, Plato, and others were meticulously translated into Arabic, propelling an age of reasoned inquiry and debate. This fusion culminated in a unique Islamic philosophy that valued empirical observation and rationality while remaining grounded in spiritual insight. The tendrils of Islamic philosophy reached far beyond the borders of the Muslim world, especially during the European Renaissance. The translation of Islamic texts into Latin brought the refined ideas of the Muslim philosophers to Europe. Figures like St. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century were greatly influenced by Islamic philosophers, particularly Ibn Rushd, known in the West as Averroes, and his insightful commentaries on Aristotle. This intellectual exchange laid a critical foundation for the European intellectual revival, as Islamic philosophy helped to reintegrate and energize ancient Greek philosophy within a new European context. These enduring connections remind us that in the tapestry of human history, the thread of each civilization becomes interwoven with another, creating a rich and diverse picture of philosophical thought. The philosophical pioneers of the Islamic Golden Age not only revolutionized their own era, but also left an indelible mark on the intellectual history of the world. As we traverse the annals of history, we reach an era renowned for its breathtaking artistic expressions, a time when every form of art was infused with a profound sense of beauty and sophistication. One cannot discuss the artistic achievements of the Islamic Golden Age without being captivated by the grandeur of Islamic architecture, epitomized by the majestic Alhambra. Located in the heart of Granada, Spain, the Alhambra stands as a testament to the ingenuity and aesthetic vision of Muslim architects in the 13th and 14th centuries. Its walls and halls are adorned with intricate arabesques and Kufic inscriptions, revealing the harmonious interplay between form and function, an emblem of paradise on earth. Beyond the colossal edifices, Islamic art also found its voice through the elegance of calligraphy and the depth of poetry. The written word was venerated, seen as a vessel for both divine revelation and human creativity. Arabic calligraphy thus evolved into an art form of its own, with scripts like Nasq, Muhakkak, and Thuluth, each adding a unique flavor to the visual feast of manuscripts and monuments. Coupled with this visual art was the literary grandeur of poets like Rumi and Hafez, whose verses continue to resonate across the ages, exploring themes of love, divinity, and the human experience. The aesthetic of calligraphy and the wisdom of poetry highlight a culture that valued knowledge and beauty in equal measure. In our day-to-day -day lives, it can be easy to overlook the art that surrounds us. Yet, during the golden age of Islam, art was an omnipresent facet of everyday existence. From the ornately designed carpets that adorned the floors to the intricate geometric patterns that graced ceramics and textiles, art was not confined to galleries or the wealthy elite. It was a communal treasure, 
reflected in the bazaars filled with vibrant wares, in the homes teeming with crafted objects, and in public spaces where art was a shared language. This vivid depiction of life through art was not just an aesthetic choice, but a manifestation of a culture that saw the divine in the detail and celebrated the act of creation in all its forms. As we traverse the rich tapestry of the Islamic Golden Age, we reach a pivotal aspect of this era, the vibrant cross-cultural exchange that wove a thread of shared knowledge between the Islamic world and other civilizations. In the bustling markets of Baghdad, a city that rose to prominence under the Abbasid Caliphate, ideas were just as eagerly traded as silk and spices. It was through these dynamic interactions that the works of Persian, Indian, and Greek scholars found their way into the libraries and madrasas of the Islamic world, igniting a spirit of intellectual curiosity and expansion. Perhaps the most emblematic of these interactions was the translation movement at the House of Wisdom, where scholars like the Persian polymath Al-Khwarizmi, who lived in the 9th century, introduced algebra, an uncharted territory that was destined to revolutionize mathematics and the sciences. Furthermore, one cannot overlook the contributions of figures like the 10th century physician Ibn Sina, known to the West as Avicenna. His book, The Canon of Medicine, became a cornerstone of medical knowledge in both the Islamic world and in Europe. Meanwhile, Averroes, a 12th century Andalusian polymath, became a bridge between Islamic and Christian worlds through his extensive commentaries on Aristotle, indirectly influencing the shape of Western philosophy. These intellectual exchanges did not just flow in one direction. The 12th and 13th centuries saw an outpouring of Islamic knowledge into Europe, especially through the Iberian Peninsula and Sicily, where Christian scholars came in contact with Arabic texts and translations. This infusion of knowledge was a driving force behind the rise of European universities and the scientific revolution, which would reshape the world view of European societies. The impact of trade routes, both over land and by sea, cannot be overstated in mediating these exchanges. The Silk Road, stretching from China to the heart of Europe, and maritime routes across the Mediterranean were not only arteries for commerce, but also conduits of culture and learning. These channels enabled scholars to exchange ideas and learn from each other, laying the groundwork for a global network of knowledge. Translation initiatives also played an immense role in disseminating ideas. The translation of ancient texts from Greek, Sanskrit, and Pahlavi into Arabic, and eventually into Latin, allowed the works of Aristotle, Euclid, and Ptolemy, among many others, to be studied and debated by scholars across different continents further enriching ancient traditions of knowledge. It is clear that the cross-cultural connections forged during the Golden Age of Islam went beyond mere transactional exchanges. They were profound interactions that not only shaped the course of history, but also illustrated the universal nature of human curiosity and the relentless pursuit of understanding. The legacy of this exchange is with us even today, as we continue to build upon the knowledge shared by the great minds of the past, showing that the quest for learning knows no borders. As our exploration of the Golden Age of Islam reaches its conclusion, we now turn to reflect on how this remarkable period has shaped the modern world. The intellectual triumphs of this era, from the 8th to the 14th century, are not mere footnotes in history. They are the bedrock upon which much of our contemporary understanding rests. The mathematical innovations, such as the work of Al-Khwarizmi in the 9th century, who introduced the concept of algebra, laid the foundations for modern mathematics. His book, The Compendious Book on Calculation by Completion and Balancing, not only introduced algebraic methods, but also gave us the term algorithm, derived from the Latinization of his name. Furthermore, the adoption of Arabic numerals has streamlined computations and calculations, spurring advancements in science and commerce alike. In medicine, scholars like Al-Razi, known to the West as Razes, who lived in the 10th century, pushed the boundaries of medical science by questioning traditional Greek theories and emphasizing empirical observation. 
his comprehensive book of medicine was one of the most detailed medical encyclopedias of its time and served as a reference in Europe for centuries. Beyond science and medicine, there has been a resurgence of interest in this era's philosophical and literary works. The translations and commentaries of scholars like Ibn Sina, known as Avicenna, and Ibn Rushd, known as Averroes, have had an indelible impact on Western philosophy, ultimately influencing the Renaissance and shaping modern thought. Their works, once seminal texts in European institutions, are being revisited, not just as historical artifacts, but as wellsprings of wisdom and insight in philosophical debates. Furthermore, the ethos of the Golden Age of Islam, which emphasizes the pursuit of knowledge, continues to resonate today. We live in an age of boundless information and remarkable technological advancements, where once more, just as in the Golden Age, the thirst for learning and interdisciplinary inquiry holds the key to tackling the complex challenges we face. Through our reconnection with the advancements and discoveries of the Golden Age, we recognize the timelessness of its pursuit of knowledge. The value placed on science, mathematics, philosophy, and the arts during this period reaffirms the pivotal role of intellectual curiosity and cross-cultural engagement in advancing human civilization. It's a clear reminder that regardless of time, a society that cherishes knowledge and celebrates discovery is one that lights the way for future generations. Thank you for joining us on this historic voyage through the golden age of Islam. If our journey has sparked your curiosity, please subscribe to our daily history podcast for more enlightening episodes. Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Maybe your suggestion, if it garners the most likes, will become the focus of a future episode. Your engagement enriches our community of history enthusiasts. Until next time, keep exploring the vast expanse of our shared past.